Hello, my name is Ozra, and welcome back to an everything in between. Again, I missed out on uh, Steven Universe uh, episodes 7, 8, and I think 9. No, 7 to t uh, yeah, 7 to 10 I missed out on. Uh, yeah, it's 3 episodes, so it uh, makes more sense. Obviously, Star Wars is the Force of Evil was only 2 episodes, but this is gonna be up uh, faster because this one was just watched and I'm still editing the Star vs. Force of All Evil one. I'm so sorry guys, it's just time constraint and everything. And I'm also still studying so you know it's just the time. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'll put I'll put up the Star vs. Force of Evil one as soon as possible and then the sick ill one that uh, the guy requested me to do and uh, that one I think I did a really good job. I just wanna put it up. Um, so yeah, this is uh, everything in between for uh, Steven Universe and uh, one thing I really enjoy about these type of shows is that it really helps children grow up and you know the first episode was Raising the Barn which I really thought was a good episode because I was like you know what it, it makes sense why Lapis wants to leave and everything but uh, yeah it's also make it, it will also make sense that um, I think it's very hard to say that um, either persons were in the right because you know Lapis has a good reason to fear what's coming next you know maybe the diamonds will come uh, to the their place and maybe maybe not uh, you know maybe P Paradox is in the right but what is important here is that it whilst it is true that you know people don't necessarily agree all the time I think the key theme you know throughout all these episodes is compromise and Lapis wasn't willing to compromise because of past fears and so you know she ran off with the barn and uh, you know it also depicted a good a good depiction of someone in depression or starting to have a bit of depression because you know there's always signs in the face and you know I always whenever I see my you know my mom's like my mom's side um, family where you know I see my mom you know my mom's side cousin sister uh, so it's my maternal cousin sister um, I always have pain in my heart because I can tell she's in depression and it's very chronic and it's very sad but I can't do anything because you know I'm not supposed to you know it's the Asian thing I'm not supposed to you know get involved into that area because I am not part of that family so just sit back and kind of just keep quiet and kind of just watch what she's doing and uh, it's just really sad to watch because I remember when you know we were younger you know we hang out hung out a little bit and uh, it was always nice to see her because you know she was you know happier but also there you know I could see there was a little bit of problems already and that's why I, I really wanted to get into psychology as well you know I really love to study facial expressions you know body language my friend you know, told me like he was into that as well I was like yeah you know it, it is an interesting trait of the human body when you, your body gives off the natural reaction of something where you're excited you're like <gasps> when you're um, you know when you're fearful you're like <gasps> you know scared um, or you know just you know in depression there there is always signs and you know excessive laughter does not necessarily mean the person is really happy there is always a hint of sadness behind the laughter and you can always tell but also it's not easy to tell you know even though it's always there it's not easy to tell you can always tell but it's not easy to tell uh, so yeah, I really think that the, these these type of things is really well addressed here, and obviously, 
you know, it, it's it it comes down to the whole you know friends helping out friends thing. But if it escalates, you know, if it doesn't change time, you just need to help her push, or you know, help him push uh, themselves to go seek professional help. You know, there's only so much you can do as a friend, uh, and that's what I always say. Um, no one should be no one should feel like they're alone and uh, I felt like I was alone until I found the internet and that was my way of kind of dealing with my depression my own depression uh, my own you know sadness whatever you want to call it um, chronic sadness even um, but yeah the, there is always a way where it's important to understand that even if you're feeling alone now sometimes you also kind of need to give yourself space to kind of just like okay you know what the, the overthinking about things is not gonna help me i'm gonna just dive myself into something else and that's why some people choose to drink and some people choose to smoke and some people choose to do drugs because it drowns the voices in the head somehow and some people throw themselves into work you know overwork themselves um but one thing for sure is that it never goes away until you face it head on at some point where you're just like okay i need to face myself head on on this and say what the hell is happening like just find things that you're happy with you know just say okay I have a reason to live on more and yeah that that was the first two episodes that I, that I missed out on the second two episodes the first part was a bit weird because you know it's about the band and I, I get what it's it's alluding to it's more on uh, Sadie's you know loneliness uh, I really like the sound that it went for I'm happy that I didn't uh, react to that episode because it was pretty musical and uh, I think you'll be seeing more of these everything in betweens because I don't really have the time to kind of just do the reactions for you because you know finals are around the corner and uh, you know I, there's still like assignments I have to do oh my god uh, there's still some loose ends that I have to tie up Ugh. It's just it's just a mess. Um, so yeah, there there's gonna be more of this everything in between, and maybe some mini reviews that I usually do because of episodes that I missed out on. Um, but yeah, I definitely understand you know what they were going for in that episode, and I was expecting them to go more of the um, keep finding the the right sound route and they kind of did that but you know they didn't experiment enough in my opinion at least uh but when they did finally get their sound i was like oh, okay this is this is something interesting you know horror horror rock you know is a genre in music today but it does it isn't explored enough and i think you know because it's so weird and creepy and it's usually a halloween sound I don't think you know a lot of people will kind of get into that but also there is a demographic for that you know the emo crowd the the goth crowd um so to say um and yeah that was that was the episode 9 Sadie Killer um and of course episode 10 is the best one although I I skipped around a lot because I kind of I kind of knew what they were going for, uh, so I skipped around a lot, and I was happy that I didn't do an, a, a reaction on that because I skipped around a lot because I was like, yeah, I know, I know where they're going with this. Um, you know, Steven is trying to find Lion, but of course, Lion is with Connie, um, and you all know why, because you know they're kind of connected. And, you know, Steven does have feelings for Connie. Connie does have feelings for Steven, even if they do not want to admit it to themselves and I I swear they they have you know confessed before but someone I remember someone in my comments was like they're our girlfriend and boyfriend and I'm like even if they're not I mean you know of course you know we shouldn't be labeling people but hey 
if they're if they're cute together i'm definitely gonna say right, you're a couple like that's the first question everyone will have is that are you a couple so you're you fit together so well it's just human nature guys like i don't i don't i don't know it's, it's like okay they don't have labels for themselves and of course it's a dick move on my part as well to kind of just label them out of nowhere but I see a lot of you know, a lot of feels from them and I decided to label them and if you don't like it I'm sorry uh, but that's just my way of things and to each their own is all I'm saying anyway uh, so yeah they go to I mean uh, Steven goes to uh, uh, Kevin's party and you know he he sees Connie and he's like oh, shit, I don't I don't know I don't know how to approach her because I haven't seen her in a while and I, I'm just so scared because you know I kind of fuck things up kind of fuck things up in the past and I don't want to fuck things up again so I don't know Kevin help me out like it, I I think that was the first like stupid thing uh, Steven has done I mean like of course not the first but in like super duper stupid like, to go, go to Kevin to ask him for help because she's a douchebag and you know I don't think he could have even helped if he wasn't a douchebag because this is something you should do yourself and you know even though you're scared I definitely think a good friend will say hey just just go up to her man don't, don't be scared you know if you need me I'll be right here I'll be right here like rooting you on but of course you know i'll give you a distance because you know it's your girl i ain't gonna be there so i could be like the third wheel you know like that's just the bro code i'll be there but i i ain't gonna be in your business in your personal distance between your girl and yourself so there you go and i like the the way they wrapped it up you know steven was just like you know what I can't do it, and that was, that was basically me, and I was confessing to her, to the girl that I liked, I was like, you know what, I gotta do it, even though she has a boyfriend, fuck it, I'm gonna do it, so, I was just like, yeah, um, here, here's something that I did, I'm sorry, you know, I, he was like, yeah, I I understand where, where you're coming from, because, you know, I I promised you that we, we do things together, but... I was just didn't bear the thought that we could, I knew, I, I just couldn't bear the thought that you would get captured as well, hashtag feels, and I decided to choose to get captured myself even though I wasn't really thinking about your end of the feels, I probably should have because, you know, communication is important for a relationship to grow, so that's just my paraphrase of it obviously. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed Connie's response, even though I think she still should have had a hint of anger, but I definitely understand that, you know, it's, it's been some time that, you know, they've been apart and of course, you know, they, they are worried about each other because feels again. And uh, yeah, I definitely think that, you know, they even though you know other people won't admit it i will admit it that you know it's something where it's important to finally go i miss you you know i i haven't seen you in a while and i i really miss you i i i i really i was really worrying about you and i thanked every you know i thanked every like everything that caused us to meet again and obviously it's through Kevin's party because you know he said that Steven would be there and you know um, Kevin said uh, Connie would be there at the party so he's kind of the instigator as well and you know even though he was doing it for his own selfish reasons at the end of the day he still got his karma so I think I think I think it was a well balanced out at the end of the day um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed that episode in particular, even though I just skip around a lot because I was like, yeah, I, I just get me to the final third because I know 
what this is all about already. But the way they wrapped things up and the way they were talking about it, I think they did it in a very mature way and in a very good way because, you know, there is there is always going to be something dirty in a relationship and not as in, you know, ugh, that's dirty or ew, that's dirty. But dirty in the sense that, you know, there's always going to be someone who fucks up. But the most important thing is admitting that you fucked up and just promising that you'll learn from this mistake and grow as people together and stop fucking up, hopefully, one day. But that's my interpretation, you know. If you have any other interpretations, go ahead, comment down below. But for for this segment, for this uh, everything in between, for Steven Universe, I think it's, I think I wrapped things up pretty nicely, and uh, I I really think that you know I should keep track of the schedules. But again, I'm busy with my own life, so. It's, it's not to say that I don't want to do this. I really do. But it's just like, I have academics to tend to. And it's not my choice, you know. I'm forced into it. And I have to, I have to make lemonade out of the lemons I'm handed. Or make watermelon juice out of the watermelons I'm handed. Whatever metaphor you want to use in this case. So, there you have it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this segment. Uh, again, Star Wars The Force of Evil is coming. Uh, have the sick ill analysis coming for you. I I really, I really thought I did a lot of work for that, and I cut things down as well because you know I took, I took about like thirty minutes actually in the original video or like forty actually, um, and yeah that's about it guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoy once again. Uh, please leave a like if you did. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more from me and ring the bell so that you can be handed first hand news from me or remember that YouTube loves to unsubscribe people so ring the bell and ensure you're still subscribed to me and as usual please share my videos you know I'm not the type of person to be like oh, the copyright is mine um, you know people will know this is my video because of the background <laughs> because of the text um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.